Assalamualaikum dear students. Uh, welcome to Thin Film Technology course. Uh, this is lecture number 17. Uh, in this lecture, uh, uh, we will discuss uh, types of evaporations for thin film deposition. So I'm Dr. Purvez Ahmed. So let's proceed towards uh, today's lecture. Uh, type of evaporations according to uh, heating methods. I mean, we have classified uh, the evaporations uh, techniques, uh, that is the types of evaporations uh, according to uh, the heating methods. So according to the heating methods, there exist uh, three basic types of the evaporations, uh, which includes uh, thermal evaporators uh, in which normally we utilize resistive heatings. Uh, and uh, it is the only choice for the evaporations of organic materials. Uh, the second choice or uh, the second type of the evaporations uh, uh, is called electron beam evaporators. Uh, in this kind of the uh, evaporation techniques, uh, we uh, do the heatings by electron beams. And it's the most popular techniques, but we remember it's more expensive than the uh, thermal uh, evaporation techniques. Uh, the third one, which is not uh, the most popular techniques, uh, and it's called uh, the inductive heatings and which the heating is normally provided by the inductive heatings uh, are via ED, or the ED frame. So let's proceed toward the first ones, which is the most unpopular ones uh, that we call the inductive heatings. Uh, so what actually we have in the inductive heatings, uh, we have metal elements uh, and that metal element is uh, uh, wound around crucibles and RF power is run through the coil. I mean, how it look like, I mean, something like the experimental setup for the inductive heating. So what we have, just like you can see it here in this particular figure, what we have, we have metal elements, and that metal element uh, is wounded. Uh, I mean, we have that uh, is wound around a crucible, uh, and RF power is run through the coil. I mean, here you can see that we have the inductive coils. Uh, in this inductive coil, we normally provide uh, the RF powers. Uh, for the inductive heatings and the crucible type is basically the boron nitride and here we have the molten salt. So this example of the inductively uh, heated crucible used to create moderately charged uh, temperature. So what we have, uh, we have uh, the RF induces, uh, RF induces eddy currents and the charge causing it to heat. I mean here we have, uh, the, uh, we have the RF induces uh, we have the RF induces eddy current and the charge causing it to heat. Uh, in addition, uh, the eddy current is caused when a conductor is exposed to a changing magnetic field. I mean, you know, uh, we, we have an inductor coil and you know that what happened when the current passes through the inductor. So you know that what actually happened is that, uh, uh, I mean, the, as a result of that particular uh, process, I mean, uh, whenever the current is passing through the inducting coil. So you have studied that in full detail in your electricity and magnetism course. So uh, what we have from here, we have eddy currents, uh, which is caused or which is being produced when a conductor, uh, that in this particular case, an inductor is exposed to a changing magnetic field. So due to this, uh, we have a relative motions of the field uh, source and the conductors are uh, this might be caused uh, due to the variations of the field uh, with the time. I mean, uh, you have studied uh, different laws, I mean, uh, particularly the ampere, particularly the, the Faraday's law and the Lyne's law uh, and the ampere's law. So if you are expert, I mean, since a uh, uh, Maxwell equation, so you know that how it can be. Again, so we are not studying that course, uh, and I believe that we people are already explored in that course. So that's why we are not giving the full detail here. Uh, so uh, we assume that you, you are more mature here uh, by studying this course. So what happens uh, is that these uh, circulating currents create and induce magnetic fields. It opposes the change of the original magnetic field due to Lenz law. I mean, uh, you, you already have studied the Lenz law, and uh, you know that how it's been applied. That we say that the magnetic field is produced and an inductive coil uh, or in, in a coil current carrying coil or a current loop in such a way that uh, that opposes the cause it's produced uh, which believes I mean it's a journal statement of the Lenz law uh, and, and if you, you know about more detail of the Lenz law so you better to focus on your previous courses that you have studied uh, during your undergrad 
uh, so uh, you, you better to go there and you, you can have the full detail of that. So what actually we have, uh, 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 we have the circulating currents uh, that create the magnetic, uh, the induced magnetic field uh, and the induced magnetic field basically opposes the change of the original magnetic field uh, because of the Lenz law. Uh, as a result, we have repulsive or drag forces between the conductors and uh, the magnet. So, so this is this is something like a short for the inductive heating that how we provide uh, the inductive heatings and how uh, we can do the evaporations uh, with the help of the uh, inductive heatings. And we remember we already mentioned that this kind of a technique is not most popular while we are utilizing the evaporation for the depositions of the thin film. Uh, uh, then we have another type uh, it's, uh, be, uh, it's uh, being more frequently utilized for the diffusion of thin film and we call that uh, thermal evaporation. So what happened in thermal evaporations uh, just like you can see it here uh, we have this uh, kind of the experimental arrangement uh, uh, for the thermal evaporation that is we have a crucibles uh, inside the crucibles we have the source materials and that that crucible is being wounded by a resistive wire and this resistive wire mainly the, the current flow. So what actually happened in the uh, thermal evaporations uh, uh, but first of all you should remember that it's been a wide uh, uh, widespread uh, uh, technique which has been utilized for the materials uh, whose uh, vapor pressure can be reasonable at 16 degrees centigrade uh, uh, sorry at, at 1600 degrees centigrade or uh, below. So uh, the common evaporate uh, evaporant materials uh, that can be utilized in thermal evaporation uh, in thermal evaporation included a uh, gold, a uh, silver, aluminium, tannium, uh, chromium. I mean th these are different kind of material. I mean you can see it for yourself. Uh, I mean all these materials sometimes even we miss uh, the exact names. I mean sometimes possible you know that uh, to human is error. I mean uh, error is possible from a human being and sometimes you know that being a physicist, uh, being a physicist uh, it's difficult to remain the chemical symbol of the, uh, the, the, the short of the chemical compounds. Uh, so I mean uh, uh, you should know about that so all of these materials uh, they can be uh, utilized as a, a evaporant, uh, evaporant materials uh, in thermal evaporation. Uh, so here's uh, we have in this particular figure you can see it here. Uh, we have uh, resistive uh, uh, evaporated sources. So in this resistive evaporated sources, we have uh, simple source including uh, including heating discharge itself, uh, in which we utilize uh, uh, by uh, in, in which uh, uh, including the heating discharge itself uh, using a coil of refractory uh, metal heaters, a coil and discharge rod. I mean here you see that. The heated spiral in which the source rod that is being utilized. And we have also this one. Uh, what is this? This is a more standard thermal source, including a dampled board. I mean, this is uh, the dampled board, uh, a dampled board, and a resistive medium. I mean, here we have uh, this is called a dampled board. Uh, and this damp dampled board is being, uh, I mean, the uh, and a, a resistive medium. So this is somehow the uh, I mean the resistive evaporated sources that normally we utilize uh, uh, in thermal evaporation. Uh, photos of the uh, Sharon thermal evaporator. I mean the most popular evaporators uh, that we utilize in our laboratories for the deposition of the thin film. So it, it's the most popular. Uh, I mean the uh, uh, the photos of the most popular uh, thermal evaporator. Uh, that is called uh, Sharon, so you can see it here. I mean, this this uh, uh, the cupboard type of the structure is this is the best setup. And here we have along with that we have the bell jar. So what actually we do? Uh, I mean, the, uh, what we have inside uh, this bell jar? So it's, it's the internal structure of this uh, this uh, 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 bell jar. So what we have inside uh, this bell jar? Inside this uh, bell jar, I mean the, uh, the structure of uh, this particular location uh, where we put the materials that is the evaporant. So uh, here we have enlarged here. I mean, you can see it here for yourself. 
have a target look like. I mean, uh, giving the photos uh, of the thermal evaporator is just, I mean, uh, once you go to the lab and you see this kind of structure, so you should know that uh, what actually uh, it is. Uh, so, uh, I mean, something like you should be aware or you should have some recognitions uh, uh, with the setup or with the upgrading. So, this is how uh, the thermal evaporators uh, look like. Uh, the name of this uh, uh, thermal evaporator is uh, uh, Charon. And it's a different parts of the structure. I mean, so, uh, if you're interested in running this kind of structures, so uh, it's always come with the manuals. Uh, so by, uh, by by having a clear, clear look at that manuals, uh, you can get the trainings. Uh, I mean, there always been an experts who, who usually operate this kind of setup. So if you want to be an expert, first of all, you should study that manuals, and then you should expert. Then you should consult the expert, so he may uh, train you, and after that, you can easily run this kind of the uh, experimental uh, setup for thermal evaporation. Uh, the, the third types uh, we have uh, is called the uh, uh, electron beam evaporations, which in short is called E beam evaporations. So this is uh, how the structures uh, are the, uh, the experimental setup look like for the uh, E beam evaporations. Uh, so in this we have, uh, I mean uh, here you can easily, uh, I mean see different parts of this kind of the structures, uh, uh, structure of experimental setup. That is, uh, it contains uh, uh, target materials. Uh, or you can say the source materials, and those are uh, source materials uh, that is being heated by the electron beam. So here you can see that here, this is the electron beam. Uh, the tungsten filament that normally generate the electron beam, and this electron beam is uh, basically deflected uh, by the application of the magnetic field. So we generate first of all we put the source materials here, and then we uh, I mean, uh, supply a voltage uh, to the tungsten film so it emits the electrons, and these electron beam, I mean, deflected with the help of the magnetic field, so that it can heat uh, the source materials. Uh, when we heat the source materials, so it's being uh, vaporized and it's related towards the substrate, where, it's, where it is deposited at the palm of the thin film. And we remember, since uh, we do the uh, the E beams, uh, I mean, heating. So here is normally, I mean, uh, it's, it's become too hot. So here we have the, the water cooling system, the water line, that basically uh, trying to cool the system and other to match any possible action. Uh, so here uh, you can see that, uh, I mean, uh, in the flask, uh, I mean, the, the crucibles and the charge, uh, I mean, it's being enlarged here. And it, it's, it's the filament, I mean, you can see that it's the tungsten filament which generates the electron beam when it's supplying the and the voltage, and it's the bending magnet uh, which normally uh, deflects the, the electron beam uh, to, uh, I mean, to the source material in order to heat that. So the deflection plate are two uh, rest to scan the, the beam across the charge filters. Uh, so uh, what actually uh, uh, we have uh, using an electron, uh, using a focus electron beams to heat and evaporate the metals. I mean that we have already. Dust. I mean, we utilize this uh, focus electron beam to heat and evaporate the metals. So, electron temperature can be as high as 10,000 Kelvin. I mean, here we utilize the electron beam, and its temperatures uh, should be uh, as high as 10,000 Kelvin. I mean, extremely really high temperature. So, what actually we do? Uh, I mean, how we reach the high temperatures? Uh, basically, we electron. Uh, basically, we accelerate the electrons by DC power supply that is equal to 10 kilowatt and a current that is uh, tens to 100 times of a milliampere. I mean this is the power setup that is the voltage and the current that normally necessary to generate the, uh, the electrons uh, to produce a heat that is equal to 10,000 uh, kilowatt. So it's a, uh, this kind of the technique is most suitable for high temperature metals. Uh, like tungsten and uh, tantalum, uh, I mean, if you want to uh, deposit the film of this material, so it's particularly be, uh, particularly useful for uh, those materials. Evaporations, uh, we remember, and this particular techniques, uh, evaporations occur at a highly localized points near the beam bombardment spot on the source uh, surface. 
So what it mean? It means that little contaminations from the crucibles, uh, I mean, not hard or water food. So uh, I mean, uh, what actually we have? Uh, it means that by this technique we can get uh, a pure form of the thin film. Uh, so uh, uh, a picture from one of the lab uh, for the EV beam evaporator. It how the EV beam evaporator look like. So this is the typical. Uh, it's a picture taken with the help of the camera from uh, from uh, an EV beam evaporators. Uh, so this is how it look like. I mean, if you go to an advanced lab where you have every kind of the deposition techniques, so you can see this kind of the setup. So whenever uh, you just visit a lab, it's been equipped with almost every kind of the apparatus. When you see a picture like this, we remember it's the uh, EV uh, electron beam evaporator. Uh, so what's the main part of this uh, uh, setup? Are uh, EV beam evaporators. So it consists of the mechanical uh, shutters. What actually we do with that? Uh, basically, we have evaporation rate. Uh, that is set by the temperatures uh, uh, by temperature of the source but this cannot be turned on and off rapidly so here you can see that uh, I mean this is uh, the shutters uh, the mechanical shutters uh, here you can see here with the help of this red arrow this is the mechanical shutter and these are the cooling wire uh, the cooling for uh, the cooling uh, coil or the cooling uh, pipe uh, which is normally being utilized uh, for the core part to cool uh, to keep the system cool and other to avoid any particular accident or to provide the transport or the mesh. And uh, this is the place, uh, this is the place where basically we put uh, the source material and uh, the, uh, I mean the, where we put the, uh, the crucible. Uh, heat conduction of the heat limit uh, equable temperature, power density uh, in this particular setup, uh, it will uh, I mean, equal to uh, almost goes to 10,000 uh, uh, 10, volts or uh, up to 1.5 amperes or 0 0.221 uh, centimeter uh, up area, 1 centimeter square of area. Uh, that is, is equal to, I mean, it's a power density uh, equal to uh, 13 to 75 Kelvin volt, uh, kilowatt per centimeter uh, square. So here uh, you see, uh, I mean, it's the place, uh, just like we mentioned, this place are between a large or separate zone. This is the place uh, where we put the crucibles, uh, I mean, during the growth of the thin film. And that crucible, you know that we put the source material. Comparison of thermal and e beam evaporations. Uh, so here you can clearly see your tables uh, in which we have done the comparisons. Uh, you know that why is the comparison only uh, between the two types of the evaporations uh, why two type of the evaporation because you know that mostly these two types are being frequently utilized for the deposition of the thin film uh, the inducting heating is not uh, much popular that's not being frequently utilized so that's why these are the two mainly uh, utilized technique for the deposition of thin film so here in this particular table we have done uh, the comparisons uh, between uh, uh, this is the comparison between uh, uh, between the two uh, main types of the evaporation that is thermal and e beam. So here uh, you see that on the left most the deposition technique thermal and evaporations. So first we have thermal and thermals uh, we utilize normally the materials uh, which can be metals or low uh, or low melt uh, point uh, low melting point materials. Uh, typical evaporant that we can utilize already mentioned about them you can see here these are the names of the typical evaporants uh, that is mostly uh, I mean gold silver aluminium chromium uh, etc uh, I mean uh, that can be utilized here as a typical evaporant impurity concentrations can be very high in this techniques uh, the deposition rate from 1 to uh, 20 angstrom per second the temperature range can go up to uh, 1800 degrees centigrade but we remember the cost of this technique is uh, low uh, when we have the e-beam or the electron beam operation so we remember it can utilize the materials both in metals and dielectric forms 
and uh, along with all these i mean the about uh, metals or their compounds or semiconductors uh, these techniques uh, along with all these it can be it can utilize uh, these material as well i mean uh, this uh, electron beam can be almost we can say that it can be utilized for almost all kinds of the material this quite mentioned here everything about i mean uh, run bar I mean all these materials and along with that it can be utilized for these material as well but we remember these materials cannot be utilized in thermal evaporation so impurity concentrations uh, or impurity content uh, while utilizing the e beam can be very very low and deposition rate here uh, deposition rate is also high Uh, which can range from a uh, 10 to 100 angstrom per second, but the temperature here is quite high, almost double, almost almost double. That is, uh, I mean, in comparison to thermal, that is approximately 300,000, uh, uh, approximately 30,000. Uh, sorry, uh, but it's 30,000 uh, temperature. I mean, uh, even evaporates with temperature uh, uh, almost uh, equal to 3,000. but uh, we remember the cost of this technique uh, of this uh, experimental side is uh, high uh, high as compared to the thermal and conductive so uh, uh, in more formal way uh, thermal evaporation is sample robust and in wide spread use uh, so it, it use uh, tungsten tantalum or molybdenum uh, filaments to heat the evaporation source typical filament currents are uh, from 200 to 300 amperes exposes a uh, substrate to uh, visible in uh, ir radiations contaminants from the heat uh, from the heated board are crucibles means the possibility of the contaminations uh, uh, i mean the major source of the contaminations uh, can be from the board or the crucible that we utilize for holding the materials during the growth Uh, electron beam evaporation and electron beam evaporations uh, saying that it's more complex as compared to thermal evaporations uh, but extremely versatile uh, virtually any materials uh, can be utilized as a typical uh, as a typical uh, evaporant uh, less contaminations i mean by utilizing this technique we can have less contaminations uh, less heating uh, less heating to vapor as one small source area heating a very high temperature uh, exposes substrate to uh, secondary electrons radiations uh, x ray can also be generated by high voltage uh, electrons beam uh, so uh, since x rays will damage the substrate in dielectric uh, so electron beam evaporators cannot be used in the mosfet i mean this is one of the drawback uh, of the electron beam evaporations that is uh, it cannot be utilized and uh, mosfet why it cannot be utilized in mosfet uh, because it produces x ray which is made a substrate uh, and the dielectric so that's why you're saying that medium evaporator cannot be uh, utilized uh, and uh, mosfet so that's all we have for this lecture thanks for watching i'll see you very soon in the next lecture tell them bye bye